hearing from a hand letter, I think that really helps people um, digest it because I'm speaking the same language as you. I'm the exact same person. I went through all those really crazy tutorials and I was like, there has to be a simpler way. So I just taught it how I taught myself and how I wish someone had taught me. Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and in this week's interview, I'm talking to Tila from Every Tuesday, who is teaching us how to prepare your lettering for font creation on an iPad. I feel like font creation is such a big topic that people are scared of, and Tila breaks it down and makes it so much easier for all of us. So I'm really excited for you to see this interview. Let's jump right in. Tila, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I feel like I've been trying to get you on the show for like a year now, but you like had a baby and you're just so busy and I, I'm just so happy yep. you're finally here. <laughs> so, uh, me too, me too. for people who somehow don't know you, haven't seen any of your tutorials before, can you tell people who you are, where you are, what you do and all that kind of stuff? Sure. So I'm a graphic designer and hand letter based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And in 2014, I started posting YouTube channels. Um, I had a coworker that I was working with at the time that would always ask me questions of how to do things in the different design programs. And then one day she was like, Tilly, you should really just record them so I don't have to keep asking you. So I was like, all right, I will do that. So I started posting tutorials on YouTube and the kind responses were overwhelming. So I switched to weekly tutorials. That's kind of how every Tuesday was born. I would post a new video every single week. And then from there, I started teaching online courses. And in 2015, in the fall of 2015, my husband and I both quit to pursue every Tuesday full time. He is my web developer and, or I should say our web developer. <laughs> And ever since then, just been, um, you know, hustling and working hard, putting out brand new online courses and free content on YouTube, still doing it every single Tuesday. So we've been, there's a lot of Tuesdays now. I love that. I honestly, I feel like if I had to name like the top couple people that I know that make the most tutorials or I'm constantly seeing like put out new content that I'm just like, how is she coming up with this much stuff? It'd be, it'd be you. Like every time I look at your page, there's like, there's a new tutorial, there's a new video, there's a new like technique. And I'm like, first of all, how do you know that many things? But second of all, how are you like constantly putting out that much content? It's amazing. So for anybody who hasn't seen any of Tila's stuff, you should really go check it out. Um, and so we'll put, links down to it all below. So your YouTube channel, I know you have like your own courses and are you on Skillshare too? I am. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And also I'm very jealous that you have a husband who can help you with all of that stuff because my boyfriend has like no clue about any of this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm always yeah, wishing that he was like, advantage. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. awesome. So you were a graphic designer before and how long have you been doing this full time? So I've been, um, I graduated from design school in 2008. So from 2008 to 2014, I was just working at different um, studios and then quit the last place I worked at. I met my husband there. Um, so we both quit the same day and that was in the fall of 2015. So we just hit four years of working on every Tuesday full time. And your bosses must have lost their minds when both of you were like, yes, yeah, we made a, our own thing and we're done. Yeah, it was actually, it was a really unhealthy situation, especially for me. So it felt, felt really good to that's awesome from that. But yeah, doing the tutorials was my way of creating the artwork that I wish that I was making at the studio. Um, I just felt like there were a lot of opportunities that I asked to be a part of, just wasn't included on certain things. So I needed an outlet where I could create the artwork that I wanted to make. So YouTube was perfect for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so speaking of your tutorials and your courses and everything, I know that one of the big things that you teach is font creation, yes. which I think is like this topic that everybody feels so overwhelmed by. And like you hear some people talking about, I mean, I know it's a lot of work, but you hear people talking about like, oh my God, don't create a font. It's like way more work than you think and blah, blah, blah. But I think that the way that you teach it is a lot more approachable for people and like actually nicely broken down and so I'm really excited to hear all of your tips for that kind of stuff. Yeah it can definitely be a bit overwhelming just because there's a lot of technical parts to it um, and if you look online there's a few resources but they're all written and it can get really confusing so once you narrow it down to 
hearing from a hand letter, I think that really helps people um, digest it because I'm speaking the same language as you. I'm the exact same person. I went through all those really crazy tutorials and I was like, there has to be a simpler way. So I just taught it how I taught myself and how I wish someone had taught me. Yeah, that was going to be my next question is, did you teach yourself how to do this or is that something you learned in graphic design school or what happened there? <laughs> Yeah, that was, I'm completely self-taught with, with all of that. And it took me about a year to teach myself and learn all the ins and outs, just because there's so much to it that you need to learn. And then it's weeding out the stuff that you don't necessarily need as part of your font. It's just good to know. So paring down to the essentials of font making and then adding on some more advanced techniques as well. Awesome. And I'm curious how, like when you first taught yourself, it wasn't with the iPad, like the iPad wasn't no. part of hand lettering at that point. So how much easier has it become because of the iPad, if anything? Oh, it's so much easier. Before, <laughs> um, I would letter everything out with a bunch of art supplies. I would have like drawers full of papers of all the different styles that I wanted to make. And now I can just keep them in a nice, neat file and procreate. I can experiment with different brushes that I just didn't have access to or they just didn't behave the way I can make my brushes behave and procreate. So that opens up so many more possibilities. And then bringing it onto the computer instead of scanning and then enhancing the look in Photoshop, I can just bring it directly into Adobe Illustrator and vectorize it from there. And I'm, I'm good to go after that. You can also like double tap to undo on the iPad instead of having oh, yeah. to put tracing paper over top of all of your different styles. I love that. Exactly. I have no experience making fonts, but I feel like uh, there might have been a couple people who are listening right now who just went like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know what she's talking about with like, you know, put it on an iPad and then put it into Illustrator and Photoshop and blah, blah, blah. But like I said, I feel like you have a way, like you, and like you said, that you're speaking the same language of breaking it down for people. And so I think I should just like take my face off here and let you do your lesson. And then we can talk about it a little bit more after. But the sure. one thing I want to mention first is I know you have a course on this. So for anybody who starts watching, feels overwhelmed, needs more guidance, needs more hand holding, I'll put the link down to that below. It, you have a, like a really easy URL, right? What is it? Yes, it's learnfontmaking.com. Yes, very simple. <laughs> okay, so I'll pop that up on the screen and I'll put it down in the link below. But uh, yeah, let's just jump into your lesson and I'll, I'll get my face off. So right now I'm using my free Procreate lettering guides. These are available over on my website. So there's a bunch of different guides right here. I'm using the standard guides, but I've also got, there's 10 of these right here. So you can do italic um, and then you've got taller X height. So you can really vary up the style of your lettering. Using lettering guides really helps maintain the consistency of your letter forms. The shape, um, there's so many advantages to using guides, especially when you're just starting with font making. It makes the whole creation process far easier if you use guides. So I definitely recommend using guides and in Procreate it makes it really, really easy. So the way I have this file organized that you can go and download for free is you find the guide that you'd like, you toggle it down, and then I've got a layer right above the guide that says letter on this layer. This is the layer you wanna make sure that you're lettering on. If you put it directly on your guides, it'll cause issues later on when you bring your lettering onto the computer. So this is the layer you want to stay on. And the other really important thing is that you want to be using black because black is your best contrast color between black and white. And when you vectorize an illustrator, it makes a far cleaner trace. So when you digitize your lettering, it will just work out really, really well and you'll be on your way. This may sound a little confusing at first, but I promise this is super beginner friendly. Um, once you get going, you will definitely get addicted to it. It's really, really fun. So you wanna be on your lettering layer and then you just choose whatever brush you'd like. I'm using my signature marker brush. This is part of my Font Lovers Procreate brush set, but you can use any brush that you'd like. Um, if you use a textured brush, it can be a little more complicated in Illustrator. This is a clean brush. And so that would just be my other recommendation if you're just getting started. So there are two ways to prepare your lettering that I really like and that I find um, the best for bringing your lettering from an iPad onto the computer. So the first way would be to just write out all of your letters and connect them all together. So an example of this would be to just write out all of your lowercase letters. So you get the idea. You're just going to go through and you're gonna connect all of your lowercase letters in the exact style that you would like. And then you're going to add on all of your uppercase letters to go with that style. And then you wanna include any symbols, 
that you need for your font. You want to do any numbers that are going to be part of your font. And you're just going to fill up your guides. So if you fill up all of your guides and you run out of space with all of the different characters that you would like, um, all you have to do is you turn off this layer and then you turn on a new layer, you add a new layer right above it, and then you can just start all over again. So that is really handy because you're not using additional sheets of paper, you're just moving to a new layer. So you can keep reusing the same guide over and over again because you're keeping it on a separate layer from your guide. So I'm going to delete this layer, we'll return to this layer. And the other way that I recommend preparing your lettering for font making is maybe it doesn't feel really natural to just have all of your letters connecting to the preceding letter in the alphabet, and you want it to feel more natural the way that you would write certain words so it looks more like how hand lettering would look versus just a font where things feel really repetitive. So the other way that I recommend preparing your lettering is just writing out different words where they start with, so the first letter of the alphabet is A. So I would just come up with any word that begins with A, so apple for example. And now I'm getting real relationships that I would typically have. And I can make a ligature out of my two P's if I like that relationship. This gives me way more options with how my letters work together. For B, you can stick with fruit and just write out banana. And you can just keep going and write out all different words. And the way that um, your letters connect is more natural because it's in an actual word now instead of just all your alphabet connected together. And then you're still getting all of your uppercase because you're starting each new word with the next letter in the alphabet. So you take care of all of your uppercase at this point and you get numerous different relationships of letters connecting to one another. So when you bring it into Illustrator, you can pick and choose which one you like instead of being limited by whatever you've done with connecting all of your alphabetical letters. So hopefully that makes sense. And once again, if you run out of space and you're only halfway through the alphabet, just turn on a new layer right above the, pre the previous one, and you can just turn off the previous one and put them all on the new layer. So you can just keep doing this over and over again until you have all the letters and characters that you need for your font. So I'm going to delete this one and I'll show you how to export this to your computer. So once you have all of your artwork created, all of your letters and all of your characters and symbols, what you wanna do is turn off your guide layer. So I'm just going to toggle this off. And now you can see we've got that black and white contrast that's perfect when we bring it onto the computer. So in order to bring this over onto the computer, all you're going to do is hit the wrench up here, you're going to hit share, and then you're going to hit JPEG. So tap on JPEG and this can export. I typically airdrop it to my computer and then I can take it from there or you can email it to yourself. If you are on a PC, um, just email it to yourself. You can open, up, open it up in your email and then drag it right into Illustrator and use it there. So that is how to export it. And if you have a bunch of different layers with lettering on them, you're just going to turn off that layer and then turn on your next layer and export that one as well. So that is a quick overview of how to prepare your lettering for font making on an iPad using Procreate. Awesome, Tila. Well, I feel like that is like, like I said at the beginning, it just, you just make it sound so much easier than it seems like it would, would be to make a font like so cool. And I think that it'll really encourage people to try and do that with their own fonts. I feel like even if you aren't planning on selling a font, like making one to sell on Creative Market mm -hmm. or whatever, for me, even just having a font of my own writing would make my client work that much easier because I could just print out like a guideline of my own writing and then trace it onto projects. Totally. Yeah, we have a lot of calligraphers in the class that don't necessarily want to sell their font, but whenever they're mocking up their artwork for clients, they can just put it right together and it doesn't take them as many hours to, you know, set all of their text the way that the client is asking. They just drop their font in and the client's getting the style that they hired them for. Oh my God. Yeah. That would be so handy. You're making me want to do yeah. that myself. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty awesome. So in your, in your font making course, like what is, if someone was to make a font on their own, what would be the bulk of like, what would take the most time? 
Um, so when you are an illustrator and you vectorize it, vectorizing it may, basically turns it into shapes that, that can be infinitely rescalable. So the quality of your letter A at eight points will look the same at 30 points and vice versa. So it allows your letters to scale up or scale down to any size and you're always going to maintain quality. So it's a really, really important step in the process. So vectorizing it is really quick and really easy. The long part is if you wanna clean up if you want to tweak any areas of your letters and adjust them at all, we call that cleaning them up. Um, it's made out of points, so you're adjusting the points that make up the edges of all of your letters. So that part um, can be the most time consuming, but it really depends on the look that you're going for and whether or not you want to do that. Um, there's plenty of people that like the rougher look, so they're fine with how Illustrator's default settings look, um, but other people really want to tweak it and customize it and really make it their own. So it really depends. It's up to you how much you want to clean them, but that can be the longest just because you can be really, I'm really particular when it comes to cleaning up my letters, so that part takes me the longest. But after you do that, you just bring it into the font software and then you plan it all out with the spacing between your letters and that can be a really fast process as well. You test your font, make sure all of your letter relationships are looking good, and then you're all set. I feel like the when you're talking about cleaning it up, like does the iPad make that a lot easier than the like doing it on paper and scanning it in and stuff would have, or do you still have to do a lot of cleaning it up a lot of the time? So I use an app on my iPad called AstroPad. Um, I use the standard license for that one. They have two licenses now, so I just use the standard one. And what that allows me to do is it helps me to mirror my screen onto the iPad so I can draw directly on it. Since, you, since Illustrator is not available for on the iPad, it allows me to hook my iPad via Bluetooth um, to my computer. And then I get my Illustrator screen right on my iPad. So I can go in with my stylus and clean up all those areas just using my stylus. So that part is so much faster than it used to be before I'd be using my mouse and cleaning up all my points. So if you have an iPad, it comes in handy so much more than you probably think it would with AstroPad and Procreate. It, my process has probably been cut in half now for the fonts that I make. So See, huge those are iPad user. Yeah, those are like the kind of hacks I would imagine that people would get out of your course because even if, like even if they watched your tutorial just here a minute ago and were kind of confused by it, like that hack that you just told us, I feel yeah. like is so valuable. Like just this casual little like, oh, I use this app and it's <laughs> like, no, because most people, I, I mean, if you're watching this and you're not an Illustrator user, trying to clean up what Tila's talking about and like smoothing all the edges is such a pain with your mouse and you're going and grabbing yes. all the little points on it and moving it. If you can do that on an iPad, oh my God, like I did not know yeah. you could do that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I just grab the pencil tool and then I just draw right along the edge and it cleans it right up and I'm on in my next letter. So. Oh my God, genius, genius. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, okay, what's that app called again? It's called AstroPad. Okay, and write I use that standard down. License. Um, I think, I don't know what their other license is called, but that one's in a subscription license. So I just do the one time purchase license and now I've got it for forever and I get all the updates and everything. And it works great. I definitely Amazing. It. Yeah, seriously, so valuable. Okay, well, um, Tila, I, this was like short and sweet, but I think that. Like I said, if people want to learn more about font making, they should just go and grab your course because I've seen it. It's Thank great. Um, and so I'll put all of the links down below for all of that. But where else can people find you? Give me all the good links and I'll, I'll put them below, but just say them out loud sure. at least once. So my website is every-tuesday.com. And then my YouTube channel is youtube.com backslash every twos. There's no day on that. So it's just every twos. Um, awesome. So yeah, those are the main places to find me. Cool. And I imagine like on Instagram, it's all the same Instagram, every Tuesday, every all that. Tuesday. Yep. Exactly. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Tila, for coming on here. I'm glad I finally got a hold of you and got you to Thanks, come on because this is going to be super helpful. And uh, I'm sure that I'll have you back again someday. But until then, it's been a, it's been a slice. <laughs> My yeah. dad always said that. I don't know what that even means, but. <laughs> I've never okay. heard that before. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you later.